Welcome to Test Tube Plus, everybody. I'm Trace. This is a show where we take a giant science topic and we make it seem much smaller. Today we are looking at sleep, and we're going to start pretty simple, because what the heck is sleep anyway? Hey there, Internet. I'm Trace Dominguez, and we have a lot of requests over on DNews to drill down and really explore topics. And we want to do that here on Test Tube Plus. We have that freedom. We're going to spend every day for a week talking about a single topic. And by the end of this week, you're just going to get it. Whatever it is, you're going to get it. So trust me, there's no script. It's just us. We're off the cuff, hanging out. We're learning together at the same time in different places. This week, we're going to explore everything that we know about sleep. Sleep is one of the most popular topics that we cover on the Test Tube Network. All of our videos do really well on sleep. But what is sleep? Like, really? It's actually pretty easy to explain, but it's really hard to quantify, if that makes sense. Uh, sleep is a condition of body and mind, such as, I'm reading from my notes here, which typically recurs for several hours every night, in which the nervous system is relatively inactive, the eyes are closed, the postural muscles relaxed, and consciousness practically suspended. That sounds very sciencey. In a concrete way, it's a lot more complicated. We spend 36% of our lives asleep, and it's kind of amazing that we can't really explain exactly what it's doing and what it is. Pretty much everything sleeps, but they all do it a little differently. So unihemispheric sleep is something that whales and dolphins do. It's when you have heard before that it has to swim and sleep at the same time. That's because an animal shuts down half of its brain. The other half is still going, and it's allowed to kind of still move around. It's unihemispheric, or one hemisphere of the brain is asleep. There's polyphasic sleep, there's monophasic sleep, that's kind of the regulation of the cycle of sleep. Do you sleep once a day? Do you sleep multiple times a day? Uh, and then other animals, like giraffes, they only sleep two hours in a whole day. So they would sleep monophasically, one time, bihemispherically, so they're always like completely asleep, and then they're only doing it for two hours, though which is pretty impressive. I kind of wish I could sleep two hours a night. Bats, on the other hand, they sleep the most at 20 hours per day, which I'm sure many of us have done on some busy weekends. Uh, even some monocellular life bacteria, they will sleep as well. But in that case, they're not measuring actual sleep patterns like in your brain. They're measuring activity versus non-activity or inactivity. So periods of high activity, that animal is obviously awake, or that bacterium is obviously awake, and periods of low activity or none, they're going to assume that that monocellular life is asleep. So in humans and in many mammals, it's easy to kind of spot when sleep is happening because they monitor brain activity. So the brain produces electrical impulses that form waves, and when brain wave patterns indicate sleep, it's actually a different state of consciousness from wakefulness. You can actually see it on an EEG or an electroencephalogram, something they put on top of your head and it reads your brain waves. So the brain is actually doing something completely different during sleep. It's almost described in some of the research as if you have two brains. As you're falling asleep, you're moving from consciousness into unconsciousness. So in a very concrete way, it's called a hypnagogic state or that middle ground. And what's happening is your brain is handing off different things to kind of this second subbrain. So it's giving away executive function and control from one side of your brain or one part of your brain to another. And when it's doing that, sometimes, you know, it drops the ball a little bit. And that causes you to twitch while you're falling asleep, which is pretty cool. I get this all the time. Sometimes you'll even wake up. It's uh, called the exploding head syndrome. It's something that happens as you fall asleep, which they also think is related to kind of this handoff where your ears kind of hear this huge explosion sound or this weird rushing sound. It's, it's neat. It happens to uh, more people than you would think. There's something to point out, though, um, when it comes to sleep, especially with humans, is medically induced sleep. Sedation is not considered sleep because the EEG patterns are different. The brain waves, remember, are very specific. So comas are not considered sleep. You aren't conscious, but you're not asleep. Sleep is very specific. So if you took a sleeping pill to help you go to sleep, what's actually happening is you're being sedated and then your brain will hopefully, cross your fingers, go into sleep during that sedation. If it doesn't happen, 
you'll end up waking up and you'll not feel like you slept at all, but you will have been sedated for eight hours. So when you have surgery, you could be under for hours, and what happens is your brain knows it's not been asleep. So you get what's called REM debt, or R-E-M, rapid or random eye movement debt, D-E-B-T, like you have to pay it back. That happens because your brain knows it hasn't been asleep. And it does have health consequences because you're supposed to have so many hours of REM sleep every day. It's very important for your brain to kind of regenerate during those REM sleep hours. So you might wake up from surgery and actually be pretty tired because those sedations don't allow the brain to go through the natural sleep process. What is sleep? As we understand it, sleep is a period where your brain acts differently and your body is in a state of unconsciousness. It can be woken up out of that and it can be helpful for your body to be in that state and you have to do it every day and you're going to do it roughly 36% of your whole life. So it's kind of amazing that we don't understand everything about something you're doing for that much time. I mean, if you do the math, like let's say you're in a 60-year marriage, how much is 36% of that? So that's like 20 years, 21.6 years of a 60-year anniversary. Remember, 21.6 of the years they've been asleep, so isn't it really their 39th year anniversary? So what sleep is is pretty easy to define, but Really, when it comes to sleep, the question isn't what is sleep, but rather why can't you sleep? So that's sleep, but that's just the beginning. This week, we're going to be looking at good sleep, bad sleep, animal sleep, the future of sleep, microbe sleep, lots of sleep. So if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and check back soon for more.